Well, today I'm going to share with you all how to edit songs and beat match them with Ott's AV DJ. First thing you're gonna wanna do is have your hard drive plugged in, make sure that it's recognizable by your computer. You do that by clicking on your file explorer and then going down here and I have this labeled as Ott's two terabytes TB. And so I see that it is in there. I'm going to open up Ott Studio, double clicking on it, clicking the yes button and then I'll go to file and open up the section that I want to work on. So today as I hit open, I'm gonna scroll down. I have a new list of 90s music that we're gonna work on. And so I click open and there it should pop up with all your 90s music that uh, has been put in there. So uh, first thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure that the titles and artists are where they are supposed to be. So for instance, I've already done it on this particular one. But you do your art, or excuse me, the song title up top under title. And then I hit the return button and then I type if it's an extend, which has 32 count intro, 32 count outro, and it's the regular version of the song with those added. Or if it's a shortened version, I just call it snips, S-N-I-P-Z. And I put that here. Then you're gonna put the artist. It is actually important for search reasons that you do not have the artist going all the way across, but you hit return and you put them below each other. So each artist should go down below the next artist, like I have it there. So first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna make sure that Ots has already analyzed and beat matched all of these songs. To do that, you go to the tools button, hit tools, and as you scroll down, it should be the fourth line down in between uh, the batch convert to odds and batch script processor. I hit batch auto detect BPM. So I click that button. And then what you want to do is set your source location to the spot that is where that song or group of songs are. In this case, it is in drive D VJ Pro. That's correct. But in case it wasn't, you would click this button right here and you would find out exactly where that folder is that you wanna do this to. You click on it, hit okay. Once it's correct, you hit start auto detection. Now I've already done this, so it basically let me know that it's already been done for all of these. If I hadn't, it would start going through and adding the BPMs to each individual song in that folder. So now we're ready to go. So I hit file, open, I find the song selection folder that I want, which is in this case, it's under my VJ Pro videos and it's my 90s, my fourth folder of that, or not really folder, my fourth studio file, we'll call it. So I hit open, we now have it back again. You'll know that the batch has worked when you double click a song and you see this button right here pop up. This says beat info. That is what you're going to want. You click on beat info and then you come over here and you see edit. So you're going to be editing the beat info to line up the beats per minute. So this screen will pop up once you have done so. Make sure it goes full screen here. And so here's some things you're going to see. The parts that you want to know for sure is up here, right? We have, it says active, allow use. And currently there's a box that is not checked. This is your active for your intro of the song, and this is your active for the outro part of your song. Intro is beginning, outro is end. So outro is right down here, your intro is right up here. So the first thing that we now want to do is we want to be able to click active on both of these, showing that it is going to now be recognized by Ott's AV DJ to auto beat mix this song whenever it has the opportunity. So by clicking active, it means that it's ready to go. Now here's one tip. I'm gonna say not to click active until you have actually finished putting all the beats together. Because if for some reason you get distracted and never finish the song, then if you're at an event and you decide to play this song because you show that it's activated for BPM, you may have a train wreck on your hands. So only hit the activate at the very end of your song. So let, now let's go into the song itself. So again, as I mentioned, this is your intro area. We're gonna work on the intro. First thing to share about, we have pink uh, rectangles and green rectangles. The pink rectangles represent your downbeat. 
and your green rectangles represent the two, three, and four count of a measure. So if you're musically inclined, there are eight measures, then a segue point, which is this little rectangle white in the middle, and then there's eight measures, and then an outro point at the end. So the re white rectangles on top are your beginning, which is right here, your middle or your segue point right here, and then your ending point, which is right here. And you can click in this area down here to get to those spots quicker. So first we wanna get a feel for the song. We wanna know where does the song kick in? Where does the lyrics begin? At that point, that's where we're gonna want our ending mark to be. So we'll come near to here to see if our song picks up. And what we just noticed is that the song vocally did not pick up right there. So let's find out where that song picks up. I actually know where it does. It's a little further down. And that's where it picks up. Right there. Let's back up a little further. And so right here on this spot is where the song kicks in. So that's where we're going to want our intro ending point to stop. Or excuse me, to start. So... Each one of these lines that you see on the screen, this line, this line, these are your bass beats. And so that's what you wanna line up because that's what's easiest to mix with. And so I believe it was right here. Let me find out again. Bam, right there. So that's where the song kicks in. So I'm gonna take my ending white rectangle and I'm gonna come all the way down to right here And so that's where I want this song to kick in by itself. And so now I need to find out the middle segue point. And so that's going to be right in the middle of your count. So in this case, there's 32 counts. I want 16 counts on the right side of the middle. And I want 16 counts on the left side of the segue point middle. So, or four measures. So again, the pink box is your measures downbeat. Your green is your two, three, four count. So this is one measure right here. So we got one, two, three, four. So right here is where my segue rectangle should go. So I'm gonna move that to right here. And I'm gonna count four more measures. One, two, three, four. Again, there's the pink. That's the start of it. So I'm gonna move this one right here. Now, I have my intro set as far as where it's going to start. The song will begin mixing right here at the intro point. It's gonna segue to this song as the primary song at the segue point, and it's going to go full on to the song at the outro point of the intro. So now that we have the location set, I wanna make sure that we have the beats per minute lined up specifically for this song. So to do that, we start at the segue point. And we see right here that here is the, let's see if we can make this bigger. You can click these buttons down here to make this area bigger. So we can see that a little bigger. We're gonna move it to the middle and we're gonna make it even bigger, move it here. Now here's, the, here's what I see as a problem. We have our segue point right in the middle of this beat but we want this segue point to start at the beginning of this beat. So I'm gonna take it here, I'm gonna click on it, and I'm gonna move this right to where the beginning of that beat starts. So right as the squiggly lines begin, I'm moving it to that beginning point. Then I click these bottom buttons to bring it back out to full screen. And now I see that this right here is lined up where it needs to be. Now let's look at the beginnings. So we have one, two, three, four, and here's the beginning. Now I don't see my pink box here because I made an adjustment in the middle. It's messed everything else up. So I come up here, actually you can do it two ways. You can move it right here till you see the pink box. Or what's easier is you can come down here and you can actually move it and it'll snap to the pink box. And that's what I like to do is snap it right there to that pink box. So that's at the beginning. It looks like all these are lined up right at the beginning of the beats. That's kind of how we want it. Now let's look at the ending of it. There's one, two, three, four. We notice there is a 
space here between the pink and our line. So I'm gonna snap it to the pink by using this button down here. I snap it right to the pink. Now, the intro part is now completely done. So I'm gonna click active, and now I'm gonna come here in the pre-NPI and the post-NPI, I'm going to make those zero. Now, the only time you change these from zero or 50, if there is no extends or snips to the song where they have added a beat count of 16 to 32 counts before a song, and it's actually just vocals at the beginning, then you wanna keep it at that 50 mark. It mixes better that way. If though, they have added beats to the beginning of the song, it actually mixes better if you put those at zero. Too much to explain right now, but just know if there's an extends or snips of a song, make those zero, or if it's an EDM song where there's beats at the beginning of it, make those zero. If it starts off with vocals and you're mixing through vocals, leave it at the not set 50 mark, which you can see right here, it says not set. So now my intro is completed. It is active, it is ready to go. Now let me move on to the outro section. So it's down here, I can just click on it and now I can begin working on it. So again, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna see where the ending of the song begins. I jump out here a little further. So right there's where it began. So I'm gonna back up. Bam, right there. That little mark right there is where the beginning of the outro beats start. So I'm gonna make my marker right there so I know that that's where I need to end up. And so then I need to make my center segue mark next. So I'm going to count four measures from these endings. So here we go. I'm gonna start a little early. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one. Right there. So this is going to be my new mark for the center segue. So I grab my center and now I'm going to move it to right where it needs to be at the beginning of the beat. I'm going to make sure it is at the very beginning, right there. And now let me go one, two, three, four. I'm snapping out to my, my pink mark. And let me make sure that's correct. So here we go. Ah, see, I don't know if you caught that, but I actually went too far. So this is actually my downbeat, not right here. So I'm now going to move this over to right here. So I'm glad I went back and checked that. Good to do due diligence. Make sure I'm right at the start here, perfect. And now I need to change this back to right here. So I like to snap it by using this right here to that pink, perfect. So there we go. So there's the pink and there's my middle. Now I need my ending. One, two, three, four measures. Here's my ending. And I'm going to snap it over here. Recheck, one, two, three, four, segue. One, two, three, four, segue. And we're good. Now, if you're not quite sure if you have it right, so let me go ahead while I have it, let me hit active. Let me move these to zero. And this song is now complete. And I'll never have to worry about re-editing this song again. Every time I use it, it'll work great. Now, if I'm not quite sure if it, if it sounds right and the beats are really where they need to be, there is this button right here that says Audible Beat Marker Loop. This is going to give me an audible of this track. So I'm gonna be able to now hear if it's matching up well. Let me give you the example by playing it. So there you go. You can hear that click track 
with the music and you're hearing as it clicks, you're hearing the music is right in sync with it. So now this song is done. I'm gonna hit okay. I'm gonna accept changes. I'm gonna hit the save button. And now this song is done and ready to be played. Now, one thing you'll have to do is you'll have to refresh your folder for it to show. So you'll have to go into Ott Studio, or excuse me, into Ott's DJ. You'll then have to find that song, and then you're going to, when you find it, I'm just gonna pick a random one to give you an example, but so you go to show info, and then you're gonna see refresh from file. You'll hit the refresh button, and it will refresh that. I probably should pick a different, so there we go. Let me pick this one. All right, so you're gonna hit uh, show info, hit the refresh button, and then you hit okay, and it will refresh that, and it'll show that you now have that song beat mix. You'll also notice over here, there'll be a B that'll, that'll show up, and you'll see a little arrow, meaning the front song is beat mix, and then you'll see an arrow back here showing the back part of that song is beat mix. So now that song would be ready to go, and every time you mix it, it'll sound good. If for any reason, as you're mixing the song, and you find out it doesn't sound good, then what you can do is you need to either check this song to make sure you did it correct, or check the song that you're matching it into to see if there might be some mixing errors. So, any song that is over 100 beats per minute, this is exactly how I go about editing and mixing the song. But there may be times that you do a song that is under 100 beats per minute. I'm gonna share with you another video on how I go about editing that particular song because it is a little different than what we saw here.